So you may have heard about a new movie coming out, a little film called Star Wars. Now, I was really into Star Wars when I was a kid, but I'm a grown man now, and I mean, it's fun, but I'm not gonna get all excited just because of a new movie that's coming out. And... <laughs> David Kay asks, can you do a video about the El Air drive? Mmm, no. I mean, yeah, Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre came up with this idea for a warp drive that would allow us to go faster than light, but I mean, come on. Could it do the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs? And yes, George Lucas famously misused the term parsecs because it's actually a measure of distance and not a measure of time. It would be like bragging that you ran the 100-yard dash in 100 yards. But I digress. But seriously, though, the Millennium Falcon can book it, and even though it was designed to look not really impressive... What a piece of junk! It's become one of the most beloved and awesome spaceships in all of science fiction. Which really sucks that we're never going to actually see a spaceship that can fly as fast as the Millennium Falcon. I mean, at least until we can get around the speed of light problem, which would require some kind of groundbreaking warp drive technology that... Wait a second. We should talk about the Alcubierre drive. Miguel Alcubierre is pretty much a badass. He got his PhD in numerical general relativity and worked for years at the Max Planck Institute studying the math behind black holes. He's also worked extensively on Einsteinium field equations, using supercomputers to develop the idea of solitary wave solutions that are helping bridge the gap between general relativity and quantum physics. But he's best known for a paper he wrote in 1994 titled The Warp Drive, Hyperfast Travel Within General Relativity, in which he proposed a warp engine that would allow you to travel faster than light by curving space-time. What it does essentially is it creates a bubble around a spacecraft that contracts space-time in front of it and expands it behind it. Like if you can imagine a spaceship on an elastic string with the string being space-time, you could contract the string in front and expand the string in back to make the spaceship move forward. The ship is still in the same place on the string, but the string itself has shifted. And that's how it would work with the Alcubierre drive. The ship would remain stationary inside the space-time inside the bubble, but on the edges of the bubble the space-time would be curved. Easy peasy, right? Well, there's one drawback. According to Alcubierre's calculations, the amount of mass needed to curve space-time in this way would be equivalent to that of Jupiter. It's a pretty big ship. But the good news is that in recent years, a guy named Harold White, working at the NASA Eagle Works lab, has refined the equation to make it so that the ship could work on only 65 exajoules of energy. Or the same amount of energy the U.S. consumes in an entire year. And to make things more difficult, it's not just an amount of energy, it has to be a special kind of negative energy that requires an exotic type of matter that we haven't discovered or created yet. So yeah, there's some hurdles to overcome. But the Eagle Works team's working on it. Right now they've got an experiment going where they're using laser interferometers to try to create tiny microscopic warp bubbles. It would be a sort of a proof of concept. And a proof of concept is important. In fact, the very first nuclear reactor only produced enough energy to barely run a light bulb. But now they power entire cities and propel submarines through the water. If White and crew can create a tiny little microscopic warp bubble in a lab, then we might be onto something. White's colleague, Mark Rademacher, created a CGI prototype ship that they're calling the IXS Enterprise to get people inspired and pumped up about the possible future technology, which might be closer than you think. NASA has a goal of attaining interstellar travel by 2100. So how fast could we actually go with the Alcubierre drive? The Eagle Works team is estimating that the Alcubierre drive could power a spacecraft up to 10 times the speed of light. The speed of light being about 300 billion meters per second, that would mean the Alcubierre drive would travel about 3 billion meters per second. Basically, the distance between the Sun and Neptune in one second. Pretty damn fast. But is it as fast as the Millennium Falcon? The website Tor.com did an article where they tried to calculate the speed of the Millennium Falcon by using maps of the Star Wars universe and the time it takes in the movie for them to get from the planet Tatooine to Alderaan. Or where Alderaan was supposed to be. It's excruciatingly detailed, and I'll link it in the site down below. Definitely go check it out if you want to get all the nuts and bolts of it. If your nerd erection lasts longer than four hours, please consult a doctor. But they calculated that the Millennium Falcon would have to be traveling at a mind-blowing 25,000 light years per day, or 1,042 light years per hour. So to make that comparison, a light year is roughly 9 trillion kilometers, or 9 quadrillion meters, times 1,042 per hour, and you get 9.38 quintillion meters per hour. Divide that by the number of seconds per hour, and you get 2.605 quadrillion meters per second. And we've got the Alcubierre drive at 3 billion meters per second. So, Millennium Falcon for the win. But really, was there any doubt?
So I grew up with Star Wars when I was a kid, and I played with all the toys, but man, the toys they have with this new movie are just bananas. They actually have a flying Millennium Falcon drone. Seriously, I would have lost my mind if I had one of these when I was a kid, and they're not cheap, but if you're interested in getting one, I'll put a link in the description down below. Now, full disclosure, I am an Amazon partner, so if you do purchase it through the link down below, it wouldn't cost you another cent, but it would kick a little bit back to me, so it would support the channel. For those of you who don't spend your free time swimming in a pool filled with gold coins, another way you can support this channel would be to share this video on your social networks. Um, it really goes a long way toward putting this out there and showing more people the kind of fun stuff that we've got going on here. As always, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here and you like it, put a warp bubble on it and hit the subscribe button. We'll come back with more fun stuff like this every Monday. Thanks to David for a great question. If you've got a question you'd like answered, you can put it in the comments below or you can hit me up at Joe Scott Ryder on Twitter and we can get smarter together. Now, whether it's your backyard or in a galaxy far, far away, the universe is an amazing place and I'm here to bring all that interestingness to you. So so you guys go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next time. May the Force be with you.